All right, hey. Just gonna bring up the sound of my laundry. And a little bit of Lyra. Welcome back, thank you for being here. Appreciate it very, very much. I want to get right to it again. Um, I'm gonna do a basic patch. So what I wanna set up is kind of a patch that I've done before. I'm gonna just do the ducking uh, technique here where we're going to run all the outs of the hi-hat and the snare drum into one VCA. And I'm going to run the bass channel through the reverb and then run that to the VCA. And there we go, buddy. That should be all good. All right, and it's kind of, I don't like that. Here we go, lay them down. So, and then we run the envelope of the kick through the CV inverter. And then that goes out into the CV of, ooh, that's a very long one, out to the CV of the VCA. I've done that one before. And I'm going to go from uh, that VCA goes out to an attenuator down this way. Whichever attenuator you want. I'm going to put it in the bottom left, or bottom right. <laughs> and run that up to the main mix. And all right, and for the clock dividers, I want to keep them kind of separated. I will do one switch here um, with connect that to 16, the input, and that is going to go out to the hi-hat, and it's going to be inverted and sent to the snare drum. I'm telling you, every time, grab the longest cable for the shortest route. All right, so what was I saying? Uh, see, CV of that is actually going to be the base module. And I was going to run the out also through the pulse inverter here. And that will go out to the snare drum. I freaked out the other day thinking that maybe I was using the pulse inverter wrong, but uh, I, I'm not sure what the CV addition um, is useful for yet. I, I haven't used it. I think an inverted um, CV signal might be useful. Um, I don't know. That's for another video. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I freaked out because, and then I attached some CV to it thinking that, hey, maybe if I, uh, maybe if I add CV to it, it'll make a little more sense here, but it just makes, yeah. Need a pulse converter. Still need to run it through a pulse converter. Um, anyway. What I wanted to do here, a little side note, you don't have to add CV to the pulse inverter. That's all I wanted to say. Um, cool. And so I have these all running through this VCA that is being ducked by the kick. And the base module, I am going to connect to the sample and hold outputs of Sheas, so 3-bit is going to be connected there, and one there being the trigger of the bass channel, and the 1-bit was connected to the CV in of the sample and hold. And for the clock dividers to the hi-hat and snare drum, I'm going to use 8 through the first of the top pulse converter for the uh, hi-hat and I'm going to use two through the bottom pulse converter for the snare drum and then I'm going to connect four to the kick drum so let's see how this works out here might get some fun rhythms once the uh, bass module starts getting oh actually before we do that let's clock the chaos to put it on 16 give it some speed and let's see this should be all right oh clock is off i think i've done that before 
All right, I'm going to midi clock though. I want to do that and that BPM is 100. BPM of 100. I know that's not the most popular BPM. That's where I'm at. Um, okay, so kick. Bring in that kick sound. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Cool, cool. And we won't hear, oh, there it is. We won't hear um, the hi-hat or the snare until I bring up this attenuator or the bass. I'm just going to keep that attenuator down until I have these connected, however. Um, okay, so what I wanted to show you all today, after we have all this, let's bring that up to hear what it sounds like. except for that switch whenever this opens up so everything has its own divider and so this it's pretty straightforward and I like adding that switch to it uh, so okay my thought though I wanted to use these CVs uh, these little CV touch pads here and to do that I wanted to go to the sample and hold and see if I can mess with the chaos so initially what I thought I'd do is connect the sample and hold pin directly to it what you see what that does is freezes it and it's keeping it open which is kind of cool it keeps the um, hi-hat and the uh, snare drum rolling through that switch but if you tap the CV it will move along so it'll kind of move through um, the series but I, I don't want that I don't want it to freeze I want it I want the clock to keep moving so I was thinking a lot of people ask what they can do with the resistor myself included and I thought well I think now is the best time to use the resistor I'm going to run the CV touchpad here through the resistor and then I'm going to run that out and you can see the clock is now continuing to move however when I hold this down it freezes it so that kind of the sample it kind of holds it so if you have a note that you wanted to hold there and that's kind of neat so that also got me thinking what about the data pin can i do the same thing with the data pin and you kind of can uh well actually sure first i'll show you um kind of what it would be like if you connect the data pin to an LFO here. So it's always kind of changing. Sample and hold is. I'm not sure how. I'm assuming when you tap this, the sample and hold kind of takes in um, wherever the LFO is at. Kind of hear that it's constantly changing, which is pretty neat. Tap it a few times, see what happens. You can kind of just get some rhythmic stuff just by doing that, whether or not the chaos changes. So the LFO is doing something, let's change the frequency of the LFO, speed it up a bit. Cool. And that is an unclocked LFO, so I'm just kind of letting it go, it's not all synced up. But that gives you a nice variation there with the LFO connected to the data pin. Now I'm going to connect the CV to the data, data pin. Daddy pin. what happens so I what I think I learned all right is if you hold down the sample and hold and then you put your fingers on the data pin whatever the data pin is doing there it'll kind of 
sample that. I'm not sure if that's true. But <laughs> I don't know quite what's going on with the sample and hold. If anybody else can tell me, uh, I'd really like to hear what your idea of this is. But basically, it just changes things. It kind of mixes up the Shea House a little bit. I love the interaction of the switch with all that, too. So, all right. So uh, what I was thinking I could do to fill it with electricity, in my simple terms, I don't know how to put it, is to use this CV to hold the Sheas at a certain point. Let me get it when the light is very bright, in my opinion, that is what is the high note. Hold it there, and it starts to ramp up and fill that capacitor up, and get up to pitch, which is kind of a cool effect. And then once I release this, there should be more frequencies or more notes in there. I'm wrong. Let me hit the data pin a little bit. Had to do it one more time, maybe? Oh, duh, that's because my filter's up. Alright. Either way, <laughs> alright, I hope I didn't just kind of ruin my test by doing that. Let me connect the ground to, I'm going to connect the ground through an attenuator to the uh, right side of the ten capacitor here, and that should drain the extra, yeah, so this allows me to manipulate how much uh, electricity is passing through that capacitor and how much is going through the, and now you can get some different kind of groovy sounds, this is just from the Sheas going through capacitor. And that gives you just some fun, um, and then you can bring it all the way up there. And what that does is the ground opens the ground up completely, and that allows energy to continue to flow through the capacitor. In my, I think that's what's happening. Tell me if I'm wrong. I, I'm not positive that's exactly what's going on. But, um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show you, and then we can change it up a little bit.
Y'all take care. Stay safe. I'm going to play out. Thank you.